The website is goldenmean.info. We travel all over the world. We teach science and consciousness, science and feng shui, science and biofeedback. And tonight is about science and angels. So, um, our investigation this evening has to do with understanding, in practical terms, how it is that we call those elementals and nature spirits and the silts, the undines, how we make the elemental forces part of our life. Could this fit our physics? And I'm here to tell you, yes. In fact, the science fits the spirit rather beautifully. So I'm going to take a little different approach this evening. Um, Eric sang that wonderful song, uh, Somewhere, and he also sang a song about uh, communicating with uh, loved ones after death, actually. And many of these images have to do with how you fly, as it were, and how your spirit takes wings after death. So to investigate how the science might look at this, we're going to start here with the science of how death has been investigated. And a professor friend of ours, Professor Karatkov here, who actually arrives at our research group uh, here in London from St. Petersburg on Sunday, that's Professor Karatkov. And he's using here his medical device called GDV, gas discharge visualization, to measure the electric field of the aura. In this case, to measure the phenomenon of successful death. Now, I know to some of you the term of successful death is sort of an oxymoron, sort of like military intelligence. <laughs> uh, however, it, it, from, a, from an electric viewpoint, a successful death is defined as the ability to take memory through death, even as we take memory into a dream. And it turns out that phenomena is measurable. And the way that Professor Karatkov measured that is using a device called gas discharge visualization, which is basically It's a, um, it's a clinically cal calibrated aura measurement tool. Let's see, I need slide number 312 here. I wanted to just show you an example. Um, the GDB device is used by tens of thousands of doctors and takes a Perlian photograph, high voltage photograph, of the capacitive field or charge of 10 fingertips. And because tens of thousands of doctors have clinically calibrated, they know which part of which fingers or a corresponds to which glands medically. And this is even used by the American Medical Association. So the device is able to extrapolate that information and make a map of the capacitive field or charge envelope or plasma field of your body. And this is used medically and it's clinically diagnostic. It's very powerful. And uh, <clears throat> just to give you some examples, if you take too many drugs, you can see the hole in your aura. And we actually know the why of the physics of how it gets there. Because that which is holding your aura together is whatever is producing a sort of compression wave. Where's my donut here? Ah, yes, here's the donut. Your heart is like a, a, um, an implosion device. And it's creating a little suction, implosion to center. And that's creating fractality, compression, which is sucking in this electric field around your body, implosively or fractally. And the coherence or symmetry or order of that is what's determining whether or not there's holes in your aura. So for example, you take drugs and you get this little rush, but if you can't sustain that rush, then there's asymmetry there and there's a hole and it's visible. It's also neat that when you have a lover and you're having your little tantric fun, and you can actually see the bioplasmic streamers going to the aura of your lover. It's, oh. it's real, okay? So okay. the fact is that your aura is a plasma storm, an electric field, a charge field. And the fact is, you can take it with you when you die. Uh, maybe not your bank account, but... So, the process of taking your aura with you at death has been measured. And I like to say that the people who did this study were volunteers. However, they were dead. So, they didn't volunteer. These actually were people from the morgue, okay? <laughs> And, and so the clinical population here were not volunteers, sadly. Uh, however, what they did do is they took the capacitive field of their fingertips and they measured the number of hours after death that it takes for your aura to leave your body. And what we know from the Tibetan Book of the Dead, etc., appears to be good physics. 
that indeed, if your death is peaceful, and a peaceful death is critical, and a hospital is hell, you need a place that's fractal to die. And we'll tell you more about what that means. But essentially, it means the map of the place you die needs to look like a rose magnetically defining sacred space, which is also measurable. At any rate, so you don't want to die in a hospital because they don't know what death is. Namely, death is a place where your electric field needs the ability to fly like an angel. So, um, after death, if your death is peaceful, the electric field of your body leaves at about 10 and 36 hours after death. And this is a statistical average of a population. And then he measured the geometry of the electric field that did leave the body. And that ghost, or plasma storm, is still held together by something, and you are steering. And the way you steer has everything to do with physics, actually. For one thing, we know that that ghost will go to a certain place in the room, and we can actually measure and predict the place it will go. <laughs> it's called fractal, defining sacred space, the place of charge compression, what Castaneda called the place of power. Now, the other thing about death as I talk to Valerie about sometimes going to Paris, I say, I'm going to need a map. Well, if you're going to die, we suggest you get a map. There is one. It's called the Clouvet Form Constance, and hundreds of near-death experiencers. Now, these actually were volunteers. <laughs> they died, but they came back. And then they volunteered to draw a map. They said, what did you see when you died? And what they saw was, first they saw a lattice, then a cobweb, then a tunnel, and then a spiral, and then it would start over in that sequence. And this is the archetypal classic map of the geometry that people see when they die in sequence. And we actually know why you see that when you die. First of all, you need to know that the process of launching your aura at death is very akin to the physics of successful dreaming. And we know a lot about the physics of successful dreaming Another research associate from Australia, who's also arriving in two days to our research group here, Rob Gourlay, made lots of money by making magnetic maps. The magnetic map is here in color. The black lines are human roads. But the color is magnetic flux density out of Canberra in Australia. And the white lines are high magnetic conductivity. And this is how they located water and mineral resource and made lots of money from these satellite and airplane magnetic maps. But do you know what they found out? The boundary conditions on the magnetic maps were literally what the aboriginals called song lines. Thank you, dear. The song line, the dreaming track. Now, why would a river of magnetism be where you dream? Hmm? One of the most important things to do, we, we teach the, the physics of uh, of Feng Shui. One of the most important things you can do in Feng Shui is to make a magnetic map of your bed. Can you imagine why you would want a magnetic map of your bed? Because it tells you the direction you can travel in when you dream. If a magnetic map of your bed looks like a rose, good. A magnetic map of your bed looks like square metal grid, bad. <laughs> okay? Same thing as a magnetic map of your house and your heart. Yes, How do you make the magnetic map? Um, simple dowsing. There are other oh. tools, but dowsing is basically your body's ability to feel a weak magnetic line. Oh. And the ability to feel a magnetic line is the ability to feel. So if you can't feel magnetism, you can't feel. That's the physics. And then your ability to travel that magnetic river is your ability to steer when you die. And that's where we're going with this. So what I wanted to suggest to you is the reason that you see lattice, cobweb, tunnel, spiral, and then it starts over when you die, is because that is the sequence of fold geometry of your DNA. And the reason you need to know that, because then that will inform you of the origin of your alphabet. Your alphabet was the sequence of fold geometries of your DNA for the same reason. So lattice, cobweb, tunnel, spiral, the way your DNA is braided helically it starts with, actually, the, D the DNA is a dodecahedron that's been ratcheted down a sl slinky. Dodecahedron starts as a tetra cube, which is the lattice. <clears throat> you might see the cube in here. In the center, see the blue cube. So if I revolve that cube, I get this white dodecahedron. 
And then dodecaecos or dodecaecos, this is the three-dimensional fractal. We call it the star mother kit. Because fractality causes gravity, and therefore stars, the mother of stars. But that's kind of another story. But at any rate, the sequence of folds in your DNA is based on superposed axes of symmetry called going to the next dimension. <laughs> Have you been to the next dimension yet? Yes. Well, this is the new age. As they say in Sedona, well, ascend already. We need the space. What they mean is... <laughs> <laughs> what, 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 they, what they mean is, 